All right, so the coupon collectors. Um, um, so the birthday paradox is when you have a collision, when you first when you first see the same thing twice. The coupon collectors is when you've you've seen you've seen everything in yourself, right? So th this this goes back to when you know they would put. These like uh, these coupons in, in like a box of cereal or something, and you're supposed to collect them all. <coughs> and so um, you know there are only eight things, so or four things. So you think you only have to buy four boxes of cereal, but you always end up having to keep buy things if you're trying to get the last one, right? Or there's this thing in McDonald's they do a lot where they have um, they have this game Monopoly, right? Where you you if you get all the things in a property or all the properties in one group, then you win a prize, right? And so there are lots of different different, different properties. We only need ones in one group, but they leave one that is much harder to get than the others. And so you think, I've got two of them, I just need to get one more. But this last one will really kind of make you wait for a long time. Um, so the coupon collectors is analyzing it in this frame, right? So we have, well, we have this domain of n elements, and we want to kind of draw so we get so we see see all of these all of these elements in the set. Um, so, what, like a, a practical use of this is that if you're if you're if you're working for a company, you're trying to build up some sort of representative set of of uh, of customers, and you kind of you're waiting for customers to come in and and you have some trial of you know. You're, you're asking asking them to do a survey, and you have different groups of customers, and say they're all all the different groups are are, are equally likely. So say customers, you know, if you, if you know the distribution of your ages, you divide up groups into every age group, and you want to hit someone in every age group. So how how long how long does this take until you get someone in every age group? Um, and, and so it's you know it's again. Maybe if you first thought, you think, okay, it takes about about n tries before this happens, but it's going to be closer to n times um, log n tries, as we'll see. Um, so, so we're going to write the probability of of all um, of all items after k tries. Right, so this is what we're going to try and figure out. Um, so, so clearly, k if k is less than n, then the probability is zero, right? But what's but how do you write the probability that it occurs exactly on the nth time? So this is that's probably something you can write out. But it'd be it'd be really small, right? The first one always counts. The second one has to be different than the first one. The third one has to be different than the first two. And everything has to work out. You can't ever get a duplicate. <coughs> and as we saw with the birthday paradox, you know, you're probably going to get a duplicate after only square root n of these, right? So that's not a good way how to um, how, how to analyze this. So some people had seen had heard of this before. Did they, anyone remember how you analyze this? So the right way is to think of a slightly simpler version of it. And we'll analyze that, and then we'll glue a bunch of these together. So, so, so the probability of a new item, instead of after seeing k minus one items, we're going to say after seeing, um, you know, I have, I have seen t um, distinct. We've seen t distinct items. So t is something less than n. So say n is 10 and t is 5. So we've seen 5 out of the 10. Right? So maybe we've seen some of them twice, but you know, th th that doesn't factor in. Right? So once we've seen t of the items out of n of them, what's the probability of seeing a new one? What? It's a. Uh, yeah, so it's. This is going to be n minus t over n, right? So this is pretty easy, right? Okay, so 
Now, um, now the next step is what is so in um, so let's see after after seeing T um, how many um, How many trials are um, expected? Um, before seeing a new item, right? So, so if you've already seen <coughs> items, how many times do you have to draw um, items until you? Uh, in expectation until you see a new one. And over at minus. Yeah, right. So it's it's the inverse of this probability, right? So if it's if if this was one out of four, then you expect four trials until you see them, right? Okay, so um so now let this let this number be um, big T of a little t. Call it uh, x x of t, big x of t, right? And so, okay. So so now, now that we have this, an expectation. How many trials do we need until we see all? How can we use this result? So okay. So how many trials? So. How many trials until we until we see two of them using using this x of t number? Square. So it's going to be um, so expected trials to see t equals two is going to be x um, x zero plus x one, right? So this is how many trials we expect to have before we see the first one, and how many trials we expect to have before we see the, um, the second one, right? So and, and this one is always going to take only one trial. The first one is always going to be a new one, and the second one is almost always going to be a new one, right? Um, so then the, the expected um, number of trials to see equals n is, is going to be equal to the sum over um, t equals 0 n minus 1 of x of t, right? You see the sum of all these steps. And so the first step happens really quick, but the last one, when you need that just one more coupon, is going to take a lot, a lot longer time, right? If you want to get the, the last one, you have n over one, right? So it's going to expect to take and you need to get n more of the coupons before you finally get the last one. Um, okay, so now I have to figure out how much is, is this quantity, right? This is equal to um, t equals zero n minus one and this is was it n over n minus t. Right, so I can so the, the trick is you can factor out an n in front. This n is always here, and this part is changing. And actually, instead of counting from n minus t, you want to you want to count starting from n minus one and on going backwards, right? So you want to start when this quantity at the bottom is a one, which happens when t is equal to n minus one, and, and go back the other way. So I'm going to do i equals 1 to n minus 1 and uh, <coughs> times 1 over i. Right? And I did this trick where, where i is equal to n minus t. So 
I've switched here. And now I've got this expression, which looks pretty, pretty simple. All right, so who has seen this, uh, this song before, right? It's the harmonic series. Yeah, so this is uh, the, uh, this is the harmonic series. And so, so how, how big is the harmonic series of, of length n, of sum n? Yeah, so it's roughly log n. So, so h of n, and, and actually, you know, this is one of the things that people have really studied. It's, it's going to be gamma uh, plus the, um, uh, plus the natural log of n. So this is where the base is e. And this gamma is, is going to be uh, 0.577, well, it's approximately. This is the, um, this is called the, um, this is called the Euler Mascheroni constant. And, and so it's pretty well known that, that this is the, um, this is, this is, a, this is a pretty good approximation of the harmonic series. It's, I think it's, it gets closer as n gets bigger too. So it's only off when, when n is close to, close to one, um, one or two. After that, it gets pretty close. And so that means that the number of trials you expect to see is, is n times gamma plus the natural log of n, or roughly n log n. Right? So you need an extra about log n factor of these, uh, of these trials before you expect to see everything. Um, and so, so it's, um, so it's, it's possible, so, um, so I'm gonna try and do a simulation with this in class as well. So instead of birthdays, I mean, so clearly we have fewer than 365 people here, so we're not gonna be able to hit all the birthdays. But I'm going to see how long it takes at all the months. So we have n equals to, so n is equal to 12. And let's see, so we're going to have that n gamma plus, um, plus log of n is going to be roughly equal to 12 times 0. Point, let's say 0. 0.6 plus what's What's the natural log of 12? Or can someone plug this in for me? Natural log of 12? What? Natural log of 12? Yeah, so or, or actually 12 times 0 0.577 plus the natural about log. About 15. What? About 15. About 15. Okay, so this. Okay, so this. So we expect after about 15 people, we'll get, we'll get all the months. And so I'm going to. So everyone, or more people get a chance, I'll start from the other side of the class. So. Um, well, um, so start by telling me that um, the month of the year you were born. April. 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 Okay. I was expecting something a bit larger. Okay. 36.74 is what I mean. Okay, good. So it's more risky whether we make it or not. 15 would be too easy. So, okay, well, where were we? To October and then. That was me, October. Okay. Yeah, it's 36. We have a corrected number. <laughs> All right. 37. You have to round with 7. All right. Okay. 37. Sorry. 37. All right. So does it does it really matter how many? I mean, we can just count, and then you can just x off one through twelve, basically in January. You can x off the months, right? We're trying to get each month. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanna. 
I know we could keep track. Do you think that? Yeah, January through December, and then you okay. mark it off, right? Okay, January, yeah. February, March, April, May, June. Yeah. June, July, August, September. August, September, October, November. I, I switched those up today. Yeah. Uh, November and December. Okay, so we had. So keep one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's two so. Right. And then we had April, May. May. This is November. Oh, we did May. We did November. <coughs> July. July. December. December. May, April, October, August, October, August. Okay. That's it. Oh, okay. All right. Great. So, so who is? Do that right. All right. April. April. Yeah. September. New one. All right. October. October. We got it. Again, December, August, got August, November, November, not making any progress. <laughs> April, 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 March, 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 So 42, well, counting me, so 40. Some people start showing up. Um, yeah, so um, you can see we got, to, we got to 11 pretty easily, and then the last one took a while. So, um, um, so it doesn't always land on the head like I did before, right? So there's some, there's some variance in these things. And, um, so, um, so um, again, there are some. Um, so this this analysis again isn't um, completely perfect, right? There's still the problem that you may have some um, some events which are more likely than others. Like maybe if we had hit uh, um, if, if we had hit February, there are only 28 days in February, right? So it's not quite equal. So if you have, so if you have some events, um, so, so let me erase this. Um, so if you have some set of events, um, And so you say that X I, you know, occurs with um, probability with 
So sometimes when I write with probability, I'll use a shortcut, you know, just um, this WP, so with probability um, P, PI, right? And so then let P star equals the min. Um, And if you add the linear probability, then um, so this this value was roughly n log n. With the min probability, it's going to be roughly um, one over p star um, times log n instead. So if there is a really small probability event, this is really going to dominate these things. But if you only have February, which is 28 out of 365, that's not too far from 112, right? That's not really going to swing me as much. This is not much different. I've, I've done much more rounding here. This is, you know, the base 2 log instead of natural log, and, you know, so, but if you're really large, you know, really large sets, you can look at this, the smallest probability event. And this really is usually what's, what's happening and is, and is, is governing on the situations. Um, there's, there's a slightly more, um, more general formulation of this, um, where I guess I've got some time to go into this a little bit, where you're going to have a collection of, of events. And so we grouped, grouped, together, um, grouped together people in months, right? Um, so, the, um, so what if instead we wanted to say, and there's 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 a different event for every span of um, 30 days, right? Instead of it's multiple <coughs> arbitrary values, right? You know, maybe we would hit everyone every month, but no one was born between January 15th and um, February 15th, right? So, so I guess February 14th. So um, this is maybe a region as equally likely as any one month, but it doesn't have the arbitrary values. Um, so let's say we have um, some set of um, nice events. And I'll come back and define nice a little bit more precisely. Um, of these nice events. Um, each um, with a probability greater or equal than p. So, so p is going to be n zero one, right? So there's some set of these events, and and this you can have more events where you know the sum they aren't necessarily independent of each other. The sum of them can be greater than one, right? But we have this set of events. Think all 30 day intervals. And, and we want to know the probability of hitting all of these events at these points. Okay, then, then how many trials do you think we need in this case? So think of the case of you have um, some, just, just like a consecutive number of days, so a set of 30 consecutive <coughs> days. And say that probability is 1 over 12, or some value. Right. So what is the probability? How many are in expectation? How many trials do we need to meet in all of these events? Right. Let's see. So it's going to be it's going to be roughly p. It's, it's going to be what is it? Roughly um, one over p log one over. So this maybe is kind of kind of strange, right? So I can hit this even if even if the birthdays, if I looked at the exact um, if I looked at the exact you know um, time of the day that someone was born. So we have this continuous span of birthdays. This is still going to hold. So we then have, we have an infinite number of events because you can look at any 30-day window, and you'd still need about one over p times log one over. Right, so if, if this was, if if p was 30 days, this is about 12 log 12. Right, so it's still going to be about about 
35 people before you expect to hit all of these. And so, um, so does anyone think this is wrong? They don't believe this? So, uh, um, so let me give you some intuition of why, of why this is true. Right, so, um, um, so, so, so let's describe this with, with intervals. Right, so we have some span, and we're saying, and let's say, and um, an event equals a um, a birthday in a span of uh, um, of uh, um, this in a span of thirty days, right? Um, so, so it can be any span of 30 days, let's say from um, June 7th through um, July 7th, right? So instead of looking at these, these, these every span, what I can do is I can say, well, let's look at every span of, of only 15 days. So January 1st through Jan 15th through um, uh, February 1st through Feb 15th, right? And, and I do this all the way up to um, December 31st through um, or December 15th or through December 31st, right? So let's say, you know, it's, let's see this, right? Um, Okay, so if, if I have all of these all, all of these different buckets, now there are 24 even buckets, right, instead of 12. So if I have a birthday in each of these buckets, then I must have one in any span of, of, uh, of 30 days, right? There must be some bucket that maybe from um, July 1st, let's say, or, um, let's say June, 15th um, um, through the 1st of July, and if there was a point in here, there must be one in this bigger bucket as well. Right? So, um, and, and these are about 1 over 24. Right? So, so now I'm, I'm playing a little fast and loose here. I'm off, maybe off by a factor 2, but instead of 1 over 12, I have 1 over, 20, 1, over 1 over 24. So this is about 24 log 24. Right? And so if I have this many samples, I'm guaranteed to get uh, one in each of the, of the red smaller buckets. And because of that, I'm guaranteed to get one in any of these continuous number of buckets. Right? So this is pretty cool. So, so actually, you know, you think it's, you're going to need a factor two maybe, but you know, the, the factor two is not really, really needed. It's not, there's not even a, you're probably going to get one, in, if you get one in every month, you're probably going to get one in, a, in about every span of 30 days. You need a little bit more, but less than even the factor two. Um, because doing this is actually you know, kind of overkill. Because it would mean, if you need it in here, there's also one on this side and this side, right? And you'd have to hit, if you had hit, this was the last bucket to get hit, right? Then you would need one here. It would have been only bad if you had had, for both of these, to have been outside of the range. And probably, one of the two of them would have been inside the ring, so you wouldn't have needed all the buckets to get hit either, in, in most cases. But if you did have all the smaller buckets, then you would guarantee to get all of the buckets twice as big. Um, so this is really, really interesting. So, so I, I said at the beginning that one of the applications was you have, you're, you're trying to do this, these surveys of your customers, right? And you have these different groups of customers who are, who are coming in the door. And you want to hit one of every group, right? And I said, well, you knew something about the distribution of ages, and you need to get everyone within each of the age age brackets. Um, but when you're when you're really trying to do the survey, you know the age brackets don't matter so much. You just want to get a distribution where every kind of representative set of customers of some, you know. That, that represents some fraction of all your customers, you have some representative person from that set. And so if you say, I want 
any set of customers that represents about 1% of, um, of my customer base or larger. I want to get at least one person from that set to take a survey. Right? So, so if, if these sets were um, if these sets were nice, then um, then then they would need about 100 um, times log of log base and uh, log base e of 100, which is what is it about six or something? 100 natural log of natural yeah. 4.6. 4.6. So about 460 people to get, you know, every every customer group up to about 1% density. Um, so when I tell you this, do you believe this is true? That I could get every possible customer set of 1% density? Of any any group of customers who represents 1% of my customers, am I gonna hit all of those sets? There's something wrong. Oh no no I uh, I want to wait till someone figures out what's what's wrong here. There's there's if you if you deconstruct this experiment right. I, I took 100 I took 460 people, and I claim that every and so let's say on my 460 people in it, and I've got a million customers. Right, so 1% of a million is going to be 10,000. So every group of 10,000 customers, I have one sample form. Is that true? There's a simple argument why that doesn't work, right? There's just not enough to fit into it. Yeah, so, well, so, um, so, uh, um, so as we explain, I'll tell you a story. When I was in, um, when I was in high school, I was taking a driver's ed class. And my my instructor, maybe not the sharpest guy, said 10% of all people are drunk, um, or 10% of all people are alcoholics. And I said, I don't, I don't think that's right. So it was a group of high school students, you know, I was in high school. I'm like, so 10% of the people in this room are alcoholics. He's like, yes. I'm like, mm, I think some people in my high school may have been drinking, but not 10% are alcoholics. I'm like, okay. So 10% of all like. Um, of, of all uh, um, teachers in the school of alcohol. He's like, uh, yes. I'm like, oh, okay. So, <laughs> well, maybe I should have asked that question. Right? But, um, so, so, not 10% of every population is alcoholics, right? So you can, if you can construct a, if you, if you took a group of, of 100 people, 10% are alcoholics, you take those 10% people out, those are 10 people. You take them out of the room. 90 people are left. What percent are alcoholics? <laughs> Zero percent, right? Okay, so, 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 um, so this is exactly what's, what's wrong with the statement here, right? So I said every group of 1% of my customers, 10,000 out of the million customers I have, I have in this sample. Is this, is this true? I only have 460 people in the sample. Right, right. So, so, so what's the problem? Like, tell me how to construct a group that I didn't, I didn't sample. So you just remove four hundred sixty. Yeah. So, so, so I have a million people. I took you take those four hundred sixty I sampled out. And then you take any set of the of the ten thousand people who are left. I have not sampled from those people, right? So I haven't covered every customer group. Uh, uh, so is this clear to everyone, right? So so I had so I took this sample and I took them randomly, right? And I hit all of these all these intervals, maybe. But so every interval, I want every interval of of ten thousand people to be hit. Right? And if I order them by birthday, then I've done it. So that's 100 subsets, right? It's, it's 100 different subsets, right? So each of the, each of the, um, the black subsets, is, a, is there are 100 of them, and they have 10,000 people, right? There, there are 10,000 people here, and I've got three. So let's see, I've got one example of this 10,000 group, right? But 
let's say that the group of 10,000 people are all the people who were, were born on the first day of a month. Right? Now, I haven't said anything about that here, right? I've, I've only talked about these consecutive intervals. So each subset is, is that subset for a particular reason? Because they have something unique that you're trying to get each one. I'm, yeah, so I needed these, these nice events. And I didn't tell you what, what nice was. The nice is that you have to kind of predefine the family of events that you have. They have to somehow um, be, be kind of a, um, um, kind of a, the, 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 it, it can't take, um, so the natural definition is related um, to something called BC dimension, um, which maybe you'll learn if you take the machine learning class, you might learn about, I might talk about it later in the semester. Um, but basically, each of the sets, you have to be able to describe with a small number of um, variables. And so, so, so basically, if you can describe an interval by the two endpoints, right? I can describe this interval by two endpoints. And so I would say any interval that has at least a fraction of p of people, and, I, and its DC dimension is the, the description length, which is two, has two endpoints, then the number of samples I need is going to be one over p, sorry, v over p log v over p, where v is the DC um, dimension. So for intervals, the D is two. Right. Isn't that somewhat dependent upon how your intervals are divided up? Because if you use your cusp, for example, you know you want you know one from every one percent to see how hundred stores. You pick one cusp from every store. I mean, it's a fairly good distribution. I mean, that's also assuming you have the same number of customers at each store, which is highly unlikely. It's also assuming that the a customer walks into a random store every time. Right? If you have, if you have a certain, like everyone who walks into one store was born in on December. That's rare, right? But everyone who walks into the store in the 